live from Sister Baseball Studio. Urban Teachers Lounge is a platform for bridging the gap between educational scholarship and classroom teachers. Voices will include teachers, administrators, educational scholars, community members, and activists. Hey everybody, welcome to Urban Teachers Lounge. I'm your host, G. Fumi Lyle DeVoe. This podcast is unapologetically for black teachers, unapologetically by black teachers. The purpose of the program is to bridge the gap between educational scholarship and classroom teachers. This week, I have with me a special guest, uh, Nikki Rose. She has been with us before, and she's back again. So go on and grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Nikki Rose. How are you today? I'm great. It is a beautiful Saturday. It's a beautiful Saturday, and it's good to hear your voice here. Um, I'm going to tell the the people, I don't know if I said this, Nikki Rose is a teacher, um, an author, an advocate, um, and and she's going to lead this discussion today. Um, She talks about... um, teacher social emotional learning and what she feels um um, how this works out and so the question that she posed to me um and that we're posing to you the audience who cares who cares about the teachers and our own social emotional needs as we work for our students so nikki rose what you got for us lead us (laughs) <laughs> Two articles today. <laughs> Two, articles, Two articles, all right. For, for us today. Um, one is Whitney Ballard, No One Prepares You for the Emotional Toll of Teaching, which we know to be true, correct? Yes. And the second one is Anyone Considering the Social and Emotional Needs of Teachers. I am so excited to discuss these uh, yes. two things because we talk a lot about our students' social and emotional needs, but what yes. about our teachers? What about the teachers? So, Exactly. So the first author, her name is Whitney Ballard. She is actually a rural teacher from Mm -hmm. Alabama, Mm -hmm. and she did a guest blog on BoardTeachers.com. No one prepares you for the emotional toll of teaching. So uh, we have to remember that our rural brothers and sisters in education also go through some of the things that we as urban teachers do. It might be on a smaller scale, but we definitely have some some similarities there. And the effects are just as powerful. (laughs) They are just as powerful, most definitely. Right. And so I'm going to start out with the quote that stood out to me at first. Every day, I feel a tug on a heartstring I didn't even know existed. Mm. I think this is a very important point because we do. Right. We're caring and compassionate. We wouldn't be in this profession otherwise, right? Sure wouldn't. So sometimes we form emotional connections with our students that we don't expect, especially when students are going through hard times. And no one really prepares us for that. We can have all of the classes on pedagogy that we want. But when it comes to talking about our own emotional reactions to our students and their behaviors and their situations, Mm -hmm. nobody really discusses that. Um, So another thing that she says, and this is really driving my point, as a teacher, I'm told to keep my distance. I'm supposed to draw a definitive line and show compassion without prying. But how can we do that? We are mandated reporters, right? Right. We, We are expected to look at these kids and see if there's anything going on at home that we should be concerned about. Mm -hmm. And then if if we find evidence of that, what do we have to do? We have to report it. it. So how are we expected to not pry or show compassion without really making those connections? Um, So, again, we don't get taught this in school. Now, my master's program at the illustrious University of Southern California Uh did focus on urban teaching. And we did talk a a lot about the politics involved with urban schools and the needs of these kids. But really, we still didn't talk about how is this going to affect you when you get in that classroom. So Um, let me ask you this. Let's go back. mm -hmm. Let's go back because yeah. you, you dropped off a whole lot of information. Let's <laughs> let's start with the first quote. 
Mm-hmm. I think it was the first. Say the first quote again, slowly. Every every day I feel a tug on a heartstring I didn't even know existed. Okay, so this was coming from a teacher, somebody that's in mm-hmm. the classroom. Like you said, somebody who who knows that this is a calling, <laughs> like you can't do this yes. work without it. Um, and yes. and the, the pull of the heartstring, you know, one of the things um, that I did— um, in understanding, and un- to understand your kids and to understand how they're processing things, you have to first be vulnerable with yourself. You have to first be yeah. honest and and know how you function. So I wanted to say that, but I think it was the second quote. Say the second quote again. As a teacher, I'm told to keep my distance. There we go. I'm, uh-huh. I'm supposed to draw a definitive line and show compassion without prying. So stop right there. That, that's that's probably the one I was looking for. How then, and this is rhetorical, of course, how can I uh, de- draw a definitive line um, between being a person, a human being, and being um, a teacher, which too often it seems like you think I'm not human, right? And so I think right. that I want to I want to pause right there and and really dig deeper in that. It is difficult um, with all of the the rules and regulations and bureaucracies and stuff isms and schisms that we have to be a human. But what our kids need because they're humans, they're just little ones. Our kids exactly. need us to be a little more human. Like, I I really think, and in order to do that, I don't know that I can draw a definitive line. You know, if I want to teach them how to be better people, I have to model my emotions. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have to model to them and say, hey, you know, today's not a good day. Or, um, hey, you know, I really appreciate or I really felt this kind of way. Um when you said, oh, you did this. So it is interesting that that just that terminology to draw a definitive line. If we're drawing a line, yes, I do, you know, because it kind of sounds like, oh, we're drawing this line because it's them against us. Every time we draw a line, it's a them against us. And I think that is a problem. You know, that yes, is. we still I mean, they know that we're grown because we show up every day and we respond as grown people, but they have to know that we're human. And then we have to we have to first address our own human things. So so let's talk about drawing this line. If something pops off in my house when I come to work, did I draw that line? Did I you know, and, and we say we do it. But do are we able just from traffic? Let's talk about from from a traffic perspective. Yeah. If I had to fight all this traffic, I left well in enough time to get to work before time, and I'm stuck in traffic, and now I'm there after time. You know, how then do we carry that into our classroom? Do we have a moment? to pause do we really really draw this line and say you know what i'm gonna draw this line in the sand and i'm going to definitively uh say them against me i think that also breaks down the relationships in the class and it and it breaks down you know in placing that hierarchy there i think that's where i'm trying to go to putting that hierarchy there then the student doesn't feel as something what engaged in um included maybe right um, connected connected right so i i do agree i just wanted to slow down and and like what does that look like is it possible for us to draw a definitive line is it i mean in your experience is it possible to do that not in my experience. Uh, this, <laughs> this, this Not is yesterday when we my, was at work. <laughs> right. Yeah, it, it, it is most definitely impossible to draw yeah. that line. I will tell you that uh, this year, especially with my students, I have noticed a great deal of not even uh, you know, a great deal of emotion. Yeah. I have had a couple 
that come to class in tears. Right. And I'm not, and in that respect, I really don't try. I'm like, do you need some time? Do you want to go right. to the restroom and take a break? Right, right. But internally, I'm like, what is going on with this kid that they're coming in my classroom at nine o'clock in the morning and they're crying they're and crying, they're upset. Yeah. Yeah. They're upset. And that really puts a hold on me. And I think that's what the author was really trying to get to, is that when you see that and when you know that a kid is in distress, it's hard for you to detach from that. Exactly. Because you do care. Because you're human. <laughs> you do care. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we are supposed to be compassionate, as she said. We're right. supposed to show compassion. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that we can draw that line because you still take that home with you. Um, or, in the, you know, you sit in the car for a minute, what was wrong with that kid? I just don't understand. Right. You, you sometimes keep worrying about that kid. Right. Um, so I don't think that there's any way you can draw that line. Yeah. And that just shows, like you said, that we're human. We're human. We're human, too. And the kids need to see that we're human because we're creating a world where everything is mechanical, everything is robot, even if it's not... Uh, uh, fig uh, literally mechanical, but we're all, you know, following the same drum. Do, you know, it's like, do this, do yes. that, do this, do that, you know, and, and that's not real life, you know, and I, I definitely am fighting that um, in, in trying to let kids know, and even in my own self, like, be, having feelings is what you're supposed to have. <laughs> you're supposed you to are. feel something. You, you know, oh, you mm -hmm. felt something today. And how did that feel? And what do you think about it? You know, we should not be um, trying to constantly numb and act like it doesn't happen. I can't ignore a child that comes to my class and they're sad. Because like you said, I know that I'm going to have to, you know, I, I want to know what can I do to help you. You know, I had a situation exactly. the other day where I haven't seen this young lady in a couple of days. And I'm like, I saw her the first day. I was like, hey, how you doing? What's going on? And, you know, and she's she's kind of, you know, shy or nervous or whatever. But we right. still have to pr provide the space and let them know that we see them, you know, and, and right. we see them. But then we have to see our own selves and know our own limitations, you know. So yeah, I just I just wanted to pause on that point because, you know, that is something that we really have to to address our own feelings and and when do you? I mean, I don't think it's rocket science. We all know when we have to to um, report, you know, with our mandated reporting. Exactly. But some things is just today you had a bad day and you and your mama right. got into it over, you know, you didn't take the trash out or something. But it was the wrong Something day. Like that. <laughs> it was right. just the wrong it day, was. and things were it said was. and done, and you know it, it kind of messed with your day, you know. So it does, and that brings me to the next quote that she said, um, and I and I talked about this briefly. She said, "I learned how to write great lesson plans. I learned about mm. child psychology." but never how their well-being would affect me psychologically. Yes. Oh, my God. Isn't that a good point wow. that we think about, I'm going to go in the classroom and I'm going to make the world a better place. When you think about why you taught or why you're mm -hmm. teaching, you think about, I'm going to change these kids. I'm going to change the world. I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to change the world. I'm going to make a difference. But you never understand that hey that's going to come with some emotional <laughs> back blow yeah <laughs> so it, it definitely is because it's it's stressful when you have to save the world <laughs> and right. we are almost I don't know how to... Superman does it <laughs> or Wonder I don't Woman. either <laughs> <laughs> in any of the superheroes right. and you notice in those movies, they all have some kind of emotional right. um, discord within themselves. Right. All of those superheroes do. So even people that make those movies and comics recognize that when if you are tasked with saving the world, then sometimes you can be lonely in that element. Exactly. And that can affect you psychologically. Mm. And think about the many people, and this is my own point, think about people who go through this every day and have no one to come home and talk to. So yes. they sit in that, they sit in those thoughts 
Yeah. Maybe they watch TV or whatever, but still in the back of the head, there's nobody to vent to. Right. And a lot of people deal with that situation. Maybe people are widowed or they have no children, but yeah. there's no one to say, how was your day today? Right. And you let it out emotionally, you cry or whatever, but think about coming home to silence and just sitting back and taking it all in and it never really leaves. Please. And and so, oh, I just, I just want to add that. One, that is a powerful thing because even when we watch when you when you brought up the superheroes, I thought of all the movies, you know, because I love all of that stuff, and of course Black Panther. Mm-hmm. Let's put that out there. Yes, um, right. <laughs> but you think about all of the um, superheroes. There's they're lonely, but then there's like that one little voice. So Batman had that one little voice, you know, the the mm-hmm. dude who who makes his clothes. I forgot his name. Um, right. And then so each one has at least one person and even having that as a power, like we yeah. have to be mindful of our tribe, of our people. So even if we don't necessarily have um, someone to come home to, per se, physically, how then are we expressing ourselves? So I know that I've read um, different research that talked about. Do you have at least one person at your job that you can vent to, that you can talk about yeah. whatever you need to talk about? You know, because that helps the situations like, OK, maybe I don't have someone, but can I call somebody? How, how do exactly. we we have to be intentional? And this happened to me, I promise you, right before I, I did this interview this morning. I called one of my friends. I said, look, we have to be intentional. I know we're not going to be able to connect this week, but let me just hear what's going on, how you doing, talk, because I got to, look, I got an interview in 10 minutes, right? Right. <laughs> but And she's a teacher as well. But, you know, these are those things that we have to be mindful of. You have to have someone to share that experience, um, um, you know, to help you mentally stay balanced because it really boils down to balance. And if we're not balanced, um, we, we, what do we know? You know, one of my favorite songs by Indy Ire, it says, come back to the middle, (laughs) right? Right. How do you come back to the middle? And if you don't know, then that's something we need to work on. Like how do do I, when I leave this classroom, and I've said everything crazy to my peers and my friends and the students or whatever. How do I come back to the middle? And and that would be a great course, I think, um, to go to your point um, in education in teaching young teachers and those aspiring to be teachers. Like, how do you take care of yourself? Because you're going to have to activate all of those superpowers to take care right. of yourself. You know. Exactly. And that definitely leads us into the second article. Mm -hmm. Is anyone considering the social and emotional needs of teachers? So a little bit about this author. This is Maureen Downey. She is our hometown educational blogger from the AJC. Okay. And she, she takes her time to make sure that everything is exposed about our school systems in the metro area. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and she also does, of course, national stories but she her main focus of course is education i really loved this article because it brought a few points home and one that i think you will love okay is that she says we are now asking teachers to go beyond teaching multiplication Mm. tables come on to deliver the critical life skills that kids must have to thrive right so not only are we tasked with teaching and we have to get the high test scores. Right. Our students have to show growth every uh, formative assessment. We have to manage every that. Week and a half. Now, <laughs> right. Now we are managing our kids' life skills as well. Why? Who's missing from this conversation? Because we have a lot of parents who are not teaching their kids these skills anymore. Because they need lessons in social emotional learning. Like, yes, like, if you really think exactly. about it, so I just did a, a podcast. I got to add this to it. I just did a podcast on social emotional learning. And one of the things that the gentleman spoke about was toxic stressors. And when we have these stressors, um, it puts you automatically in a fight or flight mode, right? And mm-hmm. then from that fight or flight mode, if you didn't fight or run away, you still are sitting with those emotions. What are you going to do with them? What are you going to do with them? So exactly. if you talk about 
teachers that you are already, I'm already in fight or flight mode because I'm afraid. I don't know if you're going to walk in my door today. I don't know if I'll be evaluated. I don't know if something's going to, you know, what's going on with the kids, you know. Right. And then after I leave, I have to wrestle with all of the day's work, whatever exactly. it was, you know. And I yes, think it, it then it becomes extremely offensive to me. Um, when people assume that teachers don't need weekends and holidays and I don't need summers, vacations, like every day you add more and more to me, which means in order for me to do this job well, I have to be well. And in order for me to be well, I need a day off, you know, because right. most people and uh, those who are not in the profession of education, you are not wrestling 30 to 130 kids or people every single day, even counselors, right. you know, y'all might see what 10 people or less per day. Mm -hmm. We deal with the lives of up to a hundred people every yes. single day. And so every day, how then do we debrief? And I'm, I've actually been excited that our school is trying to, have some mindfulness, you know, lunch periods or whatever, you know, and I'm like, bet. I mean, I think I, I'm glad that that's a start, but we really have to have these conversations um, and considering our own emotional needs. Like, yeah. I can't give what I don't have. And we have to know right. when I don't have it, I need to go sit down somewhere. Because, exactly. you know, it takes me to a whole nother level. It puts me in a whole nother issue, you know. Right. So, What's that saying? You can't pour from an empty cup. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what uh, what's interesting is that my other illustrious university, the University of Georgia, uh -huh. they are very interested in this topic. So UGA professor Peter Smagorinsky mm -hmm. and his doctoral student, Sasia L. Long, they are doing research on this. So they say that, like you said, we should be offering social and emotional support to teachers yes. to help them cope with an increasingly demanding job. Mm -hmm. That is so important. And we don't talk about that. All of the professional development in the world doesn't help me if I'm going through something and don't know how to handle my emotions exactly. or I don't know how to express them or I'm afraid to express them. Or when and I express them, you assume that I'm complaining. <laughs> Right. Or, you know, you're being combative. Right. Uh, you're being aggressive. Right. You're complaining. You're complaining. So right. Sometimes we just shut up. Right. And right. we're just like, OK, well, since they think that I'm not going to say anything anymore. And then what do you do? You internalize you it. You internalize And what does it. what does that internalization do? Then that makes you uh, incapacitated emotionally. Right. Because then you're holding in all of this stress. Yes. And you're going to blow. Eventually, and your body, right? your body is taking on that. So now let's look it's, at your exactly. blood pressure. Let's look at your cholesterol. Let's look at, mm -hmm. you know, are you the basic thing that we all seem to forget? Are we breathing? Did you take a deep right. breath? Did you go for a walk? You know, did you just kind of try to free your brain up? Like what, what, how is it affecting your body? You know, right. and then you're doing this day in and day out and day in and day out. When do you stop, you know? Right. And that's the thing we're dealing with that at school. So let's talk about home. Right. The emotional, the emotional lives of teachers get no attention. And this is a quote from the article. In a policy world in which they are regarded as technicians. Ooh. So that's a good point. Yes, we are regarded as technicians. So like you said, we're supposed to be robotic which we can't be because we are human beings. Exactly. There is no way that we can navigate our careers, especially working with children. I don't care what age you're working with. Right. Managing children is going to take emotion, no exactly. matter how you look no at it. No matter how you look at it. No, no matter, matter how you look at it. Because even, it's, you know, the best, as you said, the best well thought out uh, uh, lesson plan has nothing to do, it shifts when the kids walk in the door. Because right. depending on where they are, depending on where you are, 
you know, when things happen in a building, in a class, I mean, in a school building that shifts. I mean, let, let me just yes. give a random example of something that you're quite familiar with. So you say we're going to have a fire alarm today. Right. But I have no earthly idea what time we're going to do this fire drill. I just don't know. Yeah. So now the whole time I'm trying to manage kids, trying not to teach too much because I don't want to get deep into my discussion and then the fire bell rings. Right. Right. And so that even something as simple as that can throw off how you run your class. This, ha this happened to me last week. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, they're like, oh, we're going to do a fire drill. Oh, we're going to do it tomorrow. OK, but I have planned and replanned my day according according to this random fire drill. that According you didn't do. to that. Yes. You know. And so and and that's just one thing, right? right? That's oh, just one else? thing. <laughs> that's just one thing. So let's talk about some of those other things. Testing mandates. Yes. Testing Threatened dates. by your own students. Yes. Testing days. Threatened by your own students. We see that, don't we? Yep. Um, because a lot of times violence. the children are just frustrated. The children are just they are. frustrated. Like they today are. ain't your day. I'm not doing that. <laughs> right. Um, also, the fear of mass violence. Now, yes. as urban teachers, I think some of us have always thought that ain't going to happen here. But it most certainly can. It most certainly um, can. It, it can happen. And so I think in the back of our mind, some days we're like, are we really safe? Are the kids letting anybody in the door that doesn't mm -hmm. need to come in the door? Right which we worried about a lot last year, right? right. You'd be total strangers coming into the school and right. nobody's checking ID or anything right. like that. That is a real safety concern. Particularly so when you have so many that, doors and so many kids and you cannot, we don't right. have the manpower to just stand in front of every single it. door all day long. We don't. Like you really just we don't. don't. And so that, don't. that does leave the doors of opportunity, um, you know, you hope for the best, but but you don't know. I mean, you don't know. And the uncertainty and the way that this country responds to mass shootings by acting so heartless and right. unconcerned, right. Uh, especially it is it is getting alarming to me that now when they report these shootings, people are like, oh, well, just don't take away my gun. Right. And that's how you respond. So they're getting <laughs> they, they well, it's a normalization. So exactly. Yes, it definitely is normalization. They're getting apathetic to this, and nobody. And I think that when you're a teacher, then you really start to get stressed, right? Exactly. Because you're like, not not only do I have to fear this, but nobody's gonna care if something happens to me, or I'm gonna be a martyr and throw myself in front of a bullet. Am right. I gonna die today? That's and and truth story. be told, you you know, that was what, a couple of years ago, that teacher, there was a shooting and the coach got in front of the, you know, in front of the bullet. In front of the bullet. Now, look here. I love y'all. But I'm simply right. saying uh, my people, meaning the folks that live in my house, they want right. me to come home. You know, yes, my cousins and grandmamas and them, like the uh, my my family would look real crazy at me and friends. You know, and I realize I'm not saying that this is something that you would do instinctively. Yeah, like real talk, right. you 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 want to protect your students. So we're not you do. negating that. But the reality is that compounded on the test scores, compounded on we might have visitors in the building today, compounded yes. on, oh, did you f turn in your lesson plans? Did you do? It's like that compounded that teachers are internalizing or, you know, we, mm -hmm. we quick to say, OK, I'm not doing that today. I mean, how often right. do we I know uh, you specifically are the reason why I have this Fitbit. And when I sit here, and look at this, sometimes I'm like, oh, wow, my heartbeat. What, what's happening with my heartbeat? Right. You know, or, or is right. it going to tell me that my blood pressure or my pulse is not? doing something, you know, so the, even that, you know, jokingly, I'm very grateful that I have a Fitbit or some type of device to, to help me consciously remember, okay, you need to go for a walk. Okay, you need yes. to drink some water. Okay, you know, just exactly. some basic things that life is is throwing at us and we don't remember the basic things like breathe. 
Like, oh, my right. God. <laughs> you know, so. I well, mean, even when is the last time you sat down? Oh, Which wow. Is, <laughs> you right. know, the, the first few weeks of school, I don't think I sat down at all until the end of the day. Or right. if we had a meeting. Right. I didn't sit down. And I noticed that. I'm like, wait a minute. Have I sat down? And you right. notice your feet hurting. <laughs> your feet and are your hurting. Back hurting. And, you're like, <laughs> and you're like, oh, and you're like, <laughs> I haven't sat in this chair all day. Right. I, I have not sat down. And even that is important within itself. You do have to sit down at yes, some point. At some point. And at some point, you just have to sit down and, like you said, take a breath. Just be like, okay, you yeah. know. Yeah. And, <laughs> I mean, you know, even o'clock. with our, our little <laughs> lunch breaks, you know, that teachers seem to lose them frequently, we right. need that. You know, there are many times where I just go outside just to sniff the air and to get some mm-hmm. sunlight, or if I have a little more time, I might walk around, you know, outside just to get a difference. And this, you know, sidebar, but I have always been an advocate for recess. Like when we mm-hmm. took recess out, the kids aren't getting a, a break. And that's why they no blow break. up. And the teachers aren't it getting is. a break. So everybody right. is all in this this pot of 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 toxicity all at one time. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and we yeah. don't have anywhere to bounce it off. You know, we're bouncing off of each other. No, you know? there's there's nothing. I mean, and kids are still kids, right? Even in high school, they're yeah. still kids. I guarantee you if they did have something that was like recess, they would play games. Right. They would do something. They figured to out. To get some of that, that excess out. energy out. Yeah, they would. Bring and Double Dutch back. Somebody, <laughs> yeah, something. God saw. Right. <laughs> Whatever. You right. know, um, even, a, even a basketball game, a quick basketball Kickball, game, or something. something. <laughs> yeah, right. or something. And I bet you they would come back like, okay, I can do this now. I can I'm do tired, this but now. I can do it. Yep. I can do it. But but when you don't have any kind of outlet, and this applies to teachers too, yeah. when you don't have any outlet, then that's when everything stops. You know, you're exactly. you are just you're just a ball of nerves mm-hmm. um, and emotion. And you're just like, you know, I, I was I was thinking the other day, man, I really could use a punching bag because, right. you know, even we get angry right. at students. We get angry at our admin. That's perfectly natural. People exactly. get mad at their bosses all the all time. All the time. But look, look on Facebook and look at how many <laughs> memes are dedicated to people who do not like their boss. Exactly. So <laughs> exactly. You need, that, you need that outlet sometimes. Um, that brings me to the next point here. Um, have you ever heard of secondary traumatic stress? Yes, I think I have. When it's like somebody, it's like secondary uh, smoke, secondhand smoke, right? Yes, it is. If, if somebody else is going through it, but you feel it, you so, get the What is it called? Now? I'm going to write that down. Secondary S- traumatic stress. Secondary traumatic. Wow. I'm going to have to look that up. Stress. Yes. So go ahead. And, and so on, on top of all of that, um, you know, we have talked about the fire drills, uh, the fight, the lesson plans being due, all of that stuff. On top of all that, then we go back to something really traumatic happening to our students yes. and internalizing that. that. Maybe exactly. they had a death of a parent. Maybe their parent is terminally ill, which mm-hmm. we've dealt with in the past. Yep. And you know that when they come to school, you know, you feel that tug. Yes. Of that heart of strain, that heart like we strain. talked about before. before. Most definitely. Um, you feel that. And as somebody who has lost several family members to cancer mm-hmm. um, and, and to terminal illness, I know what that's like to sit and watch somebody die, you know. Right. And so imagine that being your student and their mama. Exactly. And that student is 16 years old and they come to school every day and you see that sadness in their eyes and you're just, and then you're, you're taking in that emotion. Exactly. That is, that is that secondary traumatic mm-hmm. stress. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then on top of that, managing a classroom where the students continually test boundaries. And a lot of times those boundaries are pushed on yep. top of lack of financial support. Yeah. All of those things can be internalized. We're basically overworked and unappreciated yeah. on top of, on, on top, top of, of, think about this, 
working to manage your own finances. Thank you. Maintain, maintaining your relationships with your people. Right. And personal losses. All of this stuff. And nobody cares. Right. It is amazing to me that nobody cares. We have to be level-headed. Yeah. We have to be fair. Mm. We have to be caring and generous no matter what. We are expected to be cool, calm, and collected, collected at, all time. at all times. And, and I'm telling you, that ain't happening. It ain't happening. And, and the more we disrespect teachers' needs, their social and emotional mm-hmm. needs, the less people we're going to have graduating college and voluntarily coming into this profession. And that is the truth. That is the truth. And it, it, it's going to, and, and people say, well, you know, the teacher shortage is not as bad as they think. As, oh, as we it, think it's it been is. bad for years. But it's been bad for years. And you have veterans who are <laughs> counting their days. They don't care if it's not the end of the school year. When my day comes that I'm eligible to retire, I'm gone. I'm I don't out. care if it's October. They count I don't care the if it's days. August. They count Look, right it's to August the, day. the 22nd. I'm out. <laughs> right. School started I'm on the out. 21st. Oh, I can retire tomorrow. I'm sh- I showed up right. today. I, I'm gone tomorrow. I'm, out. Exactly. Y'all might want to find that's somebody and find a sub. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that's an issue. My own mother taught for 38 years. Yes. And oh she waited until the end of the school year to retire. But wow. we're seeing less teachers, yeah. especially in those urban environments. We're seeing less teachers staying until the end of the school year. And honestly, looking at all this, can you blame them? Right. Nobody wants to retire and go home to a host of health problems because they Thank spent you. 25 years internalizing this. And what we know, now <laughs> let's talk about health issues. What we know, unfortunately, and I know this mentally, but I have never like paid attention to it. I don't drink enough mm-hmm. water. Stop there. Because I don't drink mm-hmm. enough water, that means I, I do it strategically because that means I want to go to the bathroom. Because we, right. do we really get bathroom privileges? And we get bathroom breaks. And so with that said... It is slightly already understood that most teachers might, when they retire, might have some type of bladder problem, right? Right. This is like real talk. Mm -hmm. Um, But now, take it beyond that. So now you want me to have a mental breakdown because of, of everything, or you want other other, you know, cholesterol and diabetes and, and all these additional mm-hmm. things that a lot of it is internalized um, um, toxic s- stress or, or what you said, secondhand stress, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. traumatic stress. Like these things are we cannot afford to go home and be broke down like this. And, and, right. and why are we expected to be? So you Why? you utilize you use me almost like a machine and I'm not a machine. I'm not no. a machine. And and then you are not a machine. You you so easily and I, now I'm about to be on my platform, you so <laughs> easily come up with a way to to disregard me and even replace me, you know. Yes. But but where is the where is the benefit of that revolving door of having young teachers that are like, you know what? I'm not doing this. And then you got the old teachers like, I'm just marking time because I got a few more days. You know, uh, when are we going to stop that door? And a part of that comes in with honoring the teachers and and honoring and understanding or trying to understand what they need. Let's talk about EPA. Right. So yes. so now, you know, there have been days I've worked for organizations where I've had five EPA days. I've worked for organizations where I have three. You know, I try to use mine because if they paying, I'm going. But yeah. <laughs> how many I mean, like teachers should have some extra built in EPA days just for being a teacher. I'm a teacher. A Guess teacher. what? I need me an extra day. Because if you were really concerned, and this is where I take it personal, if you were if you were concerned about the children, then you would be concerned about the teachers and the adults that are my, around um, them. Which brings me to that next point. Yeah. Um, so so the researchers have told that the school culture, 
of course, that we are involved in, Mm -hmm. it is nested in the community. Now, I want you to think about that Mm -hmm. because we so school, 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 but don't forget, you've got a whole community surrounding you. And it says the community is what helps create the climate in which education takes place. And there is such a disconnect between the community and the schools nowadays. And think about community meetings. You've been to one, right, yep. uh, about our own cluster. Yep. Who did they want to blame? The teachers. The, the teachers. teachers did this. The teachers yep. didn't do this. The, the principal didn't do this. The principal yep. did that. But did you come in and volunteer nope. to help? Did you uh, just check in and see what the climate is like inside the school? No, you showed up after school. Did you see the fight that happened the other day on social media? Right. Did you respond to it by saying, okay, can I come volunteer for a little bit and be a hall monitor? I'd be happy to. Right. Um, So it's going to take the community coming back in and helping take some of that burden off of all of us, which I totally agree with. It's basically the authors say teachers tend to be assigned the responsibility for fixing everything that society gets wrong and the blame when they can't. And, and that's heavy. And that's heavy. Because and so, you know, I'm even heavy. thinking about two things I want to bring up before we close out. One, I'm mm-hmm. going to put uh, a, a finger in this right here. Rural. Hold that for a mm-hmm. second before because yeah. I want us to come to that. But what you said is powerful when you talk about school culture, community helps create the climate. Here's where I yeah. am. You know, in my personal research, I'm looking at gentrification and how it's affecting Mm -hmm. um, schools. I'm looking more personally to how it's affecting black teacher displacement. So what, like, let's just think it's hypothetical or or even uh, rhetorical, right? What does it Mm -hmm. look like to have the neighborhood change, but the school is still the same? So when you come into the neighborhood, you know, you might not have school-age kids. Or your kid's not going to go to this school, right? Right. They're so go to you don't have hurt. any ownership in that. And I think that is, you know, what we miss when I was growing up, you know, when dinosaurs roamed the earth. We had communities mm-hmm. where the community was invested. The community kids went there. We all yeah. were there. And so now yeah. with with broken communities, particularly broken black and brown communities, because, yes, yes there are non non um, um, or there are white communities. Right. That are are able to be community, be a community school and feed into that. But our communities are broken. And so because mm-hmm. they're broken, then how do we build school culture and climate, right? And then right, and, right. and who t- and who takes the responsibility? Because if you moved into a community, you're not yet invested in it. And even if you exactly. are, you have the privilege to pick and choose what what part of it you will be, right? It's and then definitely. and then look at Let's go outside because I love the fact um you're from where Alabama, right? Let's mm-hmm. go into rural America. What does community schools and, and family, what does that climate look like when you're talking about not only the social emotional of the kids, but the student, I mean, the, the teachers? Because I'm assuming if you don't have Internet access, right, which is clearly right. a necessity in 2019, if you yeah. don't have Internet access, you are already cut off. So right. how then right. are you... You know, that is a a secondary trauma or a first traumatic stressor. Um, And and what does that look like? How do we support those teachers and those kids? You know, I'm so glad that you brought that up because actually my own school system is pretty good at navigating that. Uh, But they are a unique situation. Uh, My high school now... Um, is, is, you know, 21st century. Uh And they have, you know, they have used technology to enhance their learning to a point to where I'm even amazed. And I'm from a big school district. I teach in a big school district. But like when when I see the things that they're doing on their Facebook page, I'm like, what? you know, I really am like, wow, oh my gosh, the kids are doing this? They're in high school or they're in middle school and they're doing all of this stuff, all this project-based learning. And so my school was unique. But I will tell you, when I was in high school, 
And I never thought about it until now. When I was in high school, I noticed that our teachers were always really emotionally invested, even more so, I think, uh, than us as urban teachers, because everybody knows each Every, other. Right. They, they probably went to high school with your mama. Yeah. Or, your, or, you know, or they know your cousin and they probably didn't talk to all your brothers and your sisters. Right. Uh, so right. there's there's even and that's more that community and that's that responsibility yeah. because you also take on a responsibility. I know your mama personally. I know, mm -hmm. you know, your mother was my teacher. So, you know, right. what I'm saying like and, and, <laughs> and when you get to cycle and that, and I think that's been a, an issue for me, like. How do we rebuild community with the physical displacement that people are feeling? I mean, I can right. imagine with climate control that nobody believes is a reality. I can imagine people in rural areas, I'm assuming there's still some farming activity going of on. Course. And so mm -hmm. what is that like? You know, what kind of trauma is that if crops aren't able to, to grow or we aren't able to sell our crops, you know what I'm saying? Like how they or even manage livestock or manage um, lifestyles. Of all of those, those things are all stressors in a rural community. And exactly. I'll tell you another thing, when you're talking about a rural community, you are also looking at poverty that is so whole different because <laughs> it's, it's on a whole nother level because you live way, way, way out in the country yep. already. Um, you might not have running water right. or, you might not have electricity. electricity. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's very possible. And you come to school and you, your parents still send you to school and you're dirty. Yeah. You have looked like you haven't bathed in weeks. Yeah. And those teachers, and especially when you're talking about elementary school teachers and they see this, um, and, and it's, it's just like, oh my goodness, you know, and, and of course. Pulling that heartstring. Yeah, pulling that heartstring. And of course, I, you know, and I had classmates like that when I was in elementary school. But one thing I noticed, those teachers would bring clothes yeah. to school for yeah. them. Um, or, you know, they would get something some kind of way. They would get some money. Their parents would get a box at Thanksgiving or something. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But, you know, but still, you still have so much emotional investment yeah. because you're a part of that community. community. And so... So that, in that respect, with rural areas, that is something that they're fortunate to have is that close knit community, mm -hmm. unless you're way, way out, and, right. you know. And even right. then, there's you, for the most part, you're gonna be embraced. Yeah. Um, but I, I still don't think that the teachers get the emotional support, just like we don't get the emotional exactly. support. I don't think anybody sits down with them and like, you know, I know that you knew their mother and their father or something like that. I know that you knew them and I know it has to be devastating that something happened. And then you, then you got the concern for the child on top of that. So, right. you know, we're in the same boat. Right. Uh, that's, that's, that's sinking as fast <laughs> as the Titanic. Exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly. Wow. wow. So, you know, uh, but I'm so glad that we were, we are able to have this conversation. Yes. I think that it definitely needs, to um to be talked about more and more you mm -hmm. know as we think about this next group of people who are going to be graduating college and stepping into the classroom we have to start taking care of our teachers yes um we can do the self-care which i talked about last time mm -hmm. but y'all got to take care of us too exactly <laughs> you know? i um, mean you, you <laughs> have to make space and and you know this is funny as we we're, we're going to close out because i think mm -hmm. we've left a wealth of knowledge here, but I will say I worked for a principal um, years ago, actually when I first moved to Georgia and she mm -hmm. was, you know, she was a slave driver, loved her dearly. Mm -hmm. She was always, um, you know, at the edge of, of data, but, but from the perspective of here's some research, look at this, let's see what we can talk about it. You know, it's like she would mm -hmm. give us really good stuff. And I remember right. complaining to her one time, like, look, you giving us too much because I want to use this stuff, but I can't implement it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, right. pull back. And so we we would have to send little people up to her, to her like, tell her to fall back. We need a few minutes to get ourselves. And she would honor that. Right. But, you know, the, mm -hmm. the most 
telling thing about her that I, I've always loved and I would never be a principal. But if I was, <laughs> this was something that I would do. So one day she manded. It was a mandatory. Everybody had, you know, doing PLC, which I don't think we called it that. But um, w- during your planning period, it was mandatory that we all had to show up in this room. Mm-hmm. Right. And at the time, right. the school was busting out. So we had. Um, um, portables outside. So it was like, we're, oh they were just building the portables, right? And she was like, yeah. everybody needs to come to portable number one. Girl, you know, we was hot. Like, look, now I got <laughs> stuff to do. Everybody right. think about you or this portable. Let me grade my little papers, <laughs> right? Exactly. And so we go out into the portable. She has the low music, the low lights, the little, in, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, infuser or something Infer- going on. Okay. And it was, she tricked us, but it was a beautiful trick, <laughs> right? right? She literally yeah. let us walk in. I think we had, you know, maybe a breakfast, a little small, you know, a little more than, than uh, a continental breakfast, but a little, le- you know, not real, real big. But just a moment, like, I just wanted y'all to come out here and sit down. I was like, oh. Yeah, and take a break. And and I want you to hear some coffee, hear some this, you know. Um, and I thought that was so powerful. And even in that, that leads me to another moment. I went to a trauma-informed care workshop. And one of the things that they did in this workshop, which was so dope, is within mm-hmm. the the, the um uh, the turning, you know, when you go from one class to the next, they would have little breaks. But the breaks weren't like a little five minute break. No, you get 20 minute break, a straight okay. 20 minute break. And it was like, mm-hmm. here's right. some crayons, go color. Or go color. here's some, you know, go outside. Or if you want a massage, you know, because this w- was really the trauma informed thing. But they, w- they literally gave you a 10 minute massage. You can sign up for that. I'm like, yeah. imagine if that was the culture in the building. I had another principal that did yeah. that for us, actually, that she got um, for teacher appreciation. She had somebody come in and we had to just sign up to get a 10 minute massage. I was like, oh, bet. Yeah. Bad. That, that I, is that's what it's all about. I was like, I'll keep you for this. Like, <laughs> I'll tolerate <laughs> all of your BS for this moment right here, you know. And so I yeah. think that 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 is something. And maybe from, you know, one thing that we don't do enough of, maybe we don't advocate for that. So maybe when they right. ask us, like, what would you want? I would like for you to take five minutes and uh, get somebody to come in to help me manage my, my emotions, you know, yeah. and not, not, not take it from the lens of, Oh, you crazy. You need a therapist. No, that's not what I said. I said, I need, I need some, I need a break. And, and mm-hmm. within that break, I want that to include some tea or, you know, a massage or just some, you know, healing music, some laughter, some laughter <laughs> a coloring book. Like here, color. Yes. Here's a picture. Color this. You know, let's do that. <laughs> Take your mind off of it. And um, so I know we're getting close to the close, but I did want to leave your listeners with a quote. Okay. And I think that it is very imperative that everybody hears this. Um, school life will not become any easier until people make themselves accountable for the weight that teachers carry mm. as they try to do what they enter the profession for. Woo! I need you to slow down and act like you a <laughs> pastor right now and say that thing again. I'll say it again. Hold on, I missed my page. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but, but, no, I got it. <laughs> but school life yes. will not become any easier until people make themselves accountable for the weight that teachers carry as they try to do what they entered the profession for. Come on now. And see that that right there, we can we can wrap this thing up because yeah, exactly. that is that is it. Like, oh my god! It is it. Oh wow! That is it. That that's that's powerful. That's powerful. And, it is. And, it's a very powerful quote. Who? Yes, I'm gonna <laughs> add. I'm gonna add that quote to the end of this podcast. I'm gonna type it up for the folks. 
Um, so I am definitely glad that you were here personally, Nikki Rose. Thank you for stopping by. I'm glad for our yes. listeners that they were here. I hope that you and everyone that's listening will share this podcast with your community of teachers, your scholars, your activists. Um, I definitely would love to hear from our audience. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Podomatic, YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes. Leave your comments and suggestions. Until we meet again, peace, power, and progress.